All right. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my pleasure today to introduce Dr. Ben Buchanan. Ben is a former OSU football player turned broadcaster and university professor at OSU. Today, he will share his personal insights and stories of becoming an OSU Buckeye and living out his dream with one of the most elite programs in all of college football. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Ben Buchanan. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. It's great to be with all of you here at Friendship Village, and uh, I want to say what a pleasure it is to have the opportunity to spend time with um, such great people today. If you didn't hear, there's a big Buckeye game that's happening this Thursday night. The Ohio State Buckeyes are going up to the University of Minnesota, and the 2021 Ohio State football season is about to kick off, and I couldn't be more thrilled. I see a lot of scarlet and gray out in the audience today, so uh, I, I see a lot of nodding heads, and, and we're excited to be here because I can see that we're Buckeyes through and through. Now, anytime I do a speaking engagement, um, I want to make sure that this is going to be a, a, this is going to be an interaction. I know you want to hear me talk, but I want to also I want to also hear from you here. That's how I run class at Ohio State. Some guys and girls come up to me and say, "Dr. Buchanan, I like your lectures because it's it's pretty interactive." Are we good? There we go. We need to make sure this is fun and interactive. So I'm going to ask for an activity to start. I'm going to say, everyone, this side and over, we're going to start with an OHIOH here, okay? So this side, when I give you the go ahead, you're going to shout OH, okay? And this side, IO. You know, you know the drill. You know what this is about, right? You've, you've done this before, okay? We're Buckeyes. So I'll, I'll give you the cue. It's OH over here and IO over there. Let's do it a few times. One, two, three, OH. <laughs> Oh, man, Coach Ryan Day, let's give you a round of applause. There we go. That's good. All right, that's good. I think, Coach, uh, I should go talk to Ryan Day, the head football coach. They, may, they might need to br bring you up to Minnesota and, and, uh, and, and be, be the cheering section up there. So, hey, I'm really excited to have the opportunity to be together, and, and I'm going to take you through some personal insights in my own life, my experiences at Ohio State. I hope you can find some value in this today. Um, and, and importantly, we'll have a Q&A at the end that I think you'll – you'll really enjoy. Um, you know, I will get into this later in the presentation, but I'm a big proponent in my classes that I teach. Sport teaches us about life. Life teaches us about sport. I think there really is a connection there, and I hope that during our presentation today, um, you can take some great value from this. As I share with you a little bit about my life, some of my experiences, people that are important to me, I think there's three important points that we all can take away. If I do a good job with this talk, it's something that we all can take away and try to implement in our daily lives. First is that I think humility and even a little bit of humor, being able to laugh at yourself, I think it's important. I want to talk to you early on about some of my successes at Ohio State, but man, I had some humble, humble beginnings to start out, and I'm going to talk to you about that. Faith. Faith is very important to me. I think it's important to know where you stand, know who you are, know what you believe and why you believe it, because sometimes in life things can get rough. It can get tough at times. Um, even during some of the times that I was at OSU, I want to share some insights and some values that are going to show you how faith has been an important part of my life. And lastly, vision. I think change, one of my favorite quotes um, change is inevitable, growth is optional. Ch ch change is inevitable in life, right? We've seen it. I see it. You see it. A growth mindset, that's optional, and that's a choice, and I think that's really important to understand. So that's having vision. Know where you are and know where you're going. But enough about that. Let's get into the Buckeye stuff. That's, that's really what you want to hear today. Um, so I want to introduce myself. My name is Ben Buchanan. I was blessed to be the three-year starting punter for the Ohio State Buckeyes, 2010, 2011, 2012 were the years that I was there. And when I was at Ohio State, I had a very unique experience. Um, I didn't just play for one head coach. I didn't just play for two head coaches. I played for three head coaches 
In the total of five years that I was there, I was redshirted, and you're probably wondering, how did that work? I'll tell you how it worked. There were some shakeups at the university from the time I was there. And I'm going to talk to you about my father, how he encouraged me to take lemons. That wasn't ideal to play for that many coaches at one time when I'm there, and turn it into lemonade, right? What, what can I learn from it? What can I, what can I evaluate from that? I played for some amazing individuals. I'm sure you've heard of Jim Trestle. You know the Senator Trestle, the sweater vest. Luke Fickle, an amazing individual who was there for one year. I learned so much from him. I'm going to go in-depth for each coach so you can see what those insights were. He's now the head football coach at the University of Cincinnati, doing a really good job down there. And then Urban Meyer. What, what do we say about Coach Meyer, the amazing uh, coach that he is and was at Ohio State, now the, the head coach at the Jacksonville Jaguars. We're going to see how that works in the NFL. Well, so I'm hearing some laughing, so we'll have, to, we'll have to keep tabs on it. It is going to be different. Now, I know we're all probably from central Ohio, maybe some um, from some different areas, what brought us here, but do we have any Westerville people in the room? Any? That's what I'm talking about. All right, I'm a Westerville guy too. Went to Westerville Central High School 2004 to 2008, and that's really where, that's where my recruiting journey really started. Um, I was blessed to have a great relationship with my head coach in high school, if you can believe it. His name was Bob Fresh, and he was the same coach that was my little league coach pitch baseball coach, somehow ascended to be my head football coach. And when I say this guy was good to me, I mean, you have no idea. I was the, I was the punter and the, and the place kicker, so I'm the guy trying to make the field goals or kick the ball far down the field. And how do you do that? How do you get recruited at a great school? Well, you have to... You have to have a coach that's willing to put you out there for some of those long kicks. I was blessed at Westerville Central. My coach let me trot out halfway you know, on the field, 60-yard field goals, 57-yard field goals, 54-yard field goals. I say this not for myself, but through hard work and training. These were some of the field goals that I made that allowed me to get recruited to, uh, to my dream school, to The Ohio State University. So you're probably wondering why you see pasta up there, right? Why is there, why is there a pasta dish are, are we looking at up there? Well, don't worry. I'll tell you. I'm not going to leave you hanging. And, and obviously, if you have any questions, please do raise your hand throughout the presentation. I'd love to, love to explain. I think all of us as high school athletes at that time, we're always dreaming of getting that offer. What's the offer? That's the offer where coach gives you a call says, Ben, we'd like to offer you a scholarship to The Ohio State University. I can't tell you how much middle school, early high school, mid-high school, all the camps I went to, all the weightlifting sessions, all the extra training after practice, I wanted to earn that offer so bad. And through God's grace and my hard work and a lot of people that worked hard around me, I was able to get that offer. I can remember um, standing in my family room, getting a call from Coach Tressel after I had done well my first couple of years, jumping up and down, going crazy, and then most importantly, and this is the funny part that you'll see, the, 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 the vision moves from me to my mom immediately because you know what happens when you commit to a school, you're going to have an official visit, and more importantly, you're going to have a home visit. And what happens at a home visit? Well, my mom's going to have to cook for Coach Tressel, Okay. Yeah, she's chuckling a little. She, that's the first thing she says. Oh, my goodness. What am I going to make for Coach Jim Trestle? He's coming to my house. She's getting all nervous. I said, Mom, we all know what you're going to make. I, I'm Greek. I don't know if we have any Italians in the room as well. And from that part of the world, we, I, I love to eat. We eat a lot in my family. I like, I like all the good foods. And so my mom makes this specialty called Greek spaghetti. It's more of a, it's more of a meat, onion-based pasta dish. It's very delicious. I wish I could bring some for all of you to let you try. I highly recommend it. So anyways, my mom decides she's going to make Greek spaghetti for Coach Jim Trestle. The day comes. Coach Trestle comes in. Coach John Peterson, one of the assistant, comes in. We're all sitting around the table. We're having a nice dinner. Mom gives the first helping of Greek spaghetti to Coach Trestle. He's eating it. He's enjoying it. We're having a good time. And then the unthinkable happened. Coach Tressel is sitting down. He looks at my mom and says, 
Steli, that's my mom. Steli, this is delicious. Can I have some seconds? If you could have seen my mom's face when Coach Trussell asked for seconds for her favorite pasta dish, it was somewhere, you can see you can't see through my mask, I'm smiling ear to ear right now. Um, it was somewhere between hitting the lottery and winning the Super Bowl, is what I would say. I mean, I mean, that was how excited that she was. And so we, you know, Coach Trussell leaves, we have a great time, and, and then and my mom goes over to my dad, and that was the first thing she said. She said, honey, did you see? He took seconds. He took seconds. He absolutely loved it. And we're all over here like, mom, don't you think he asks for that at everyone's house? And she's like, I don't know. I don't know. But she, he took seconds, so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with it. So she loved it. It was a great story. It's one of my favorite uh, stories when it, comes to, when it comes to recruiting. So after, you'll see, after Coach Tress took seconds, this was my junior year of high school, um, things really began to fall in line for me. You know, a lot of recruits, maybe their senior year is when they'll commit to their dream school. I was blessed to receive an offer as a junior in high school. It was very early. And so I remember feeling a lot of pressure going into my senior year. You know, people are looking at you like, wow, this is an Ohio State commit right here in Columbus. I felt a lot of pressure that I had to live up to that, right? I had to live up to that pressure. Um, but with great mentorship and people around me, it actually took a lot of pressure off of me. I wasn't planning for a school. I wasn't still going through that process. So I had an amazing senior season. I had, this is not for me to brag. These are for people that helped me along the way. I was blessed to achieve a U.S. Army All-American status, made the USA Today All-American, was three-time All-Ohio, uh, a Maxwell Award as the nation's top punter. And and uh, things were flying pretty high going into OSU. But if you remember, the first portion of this talk, like I talked about, that we have to remember, point number one, humility and hum humor. Have to have a little humility and humor. When I got to Ohio State, I realized very quickly, um, these guys are pretty good, like, like really good. Some of the guys that were on my team when I started if you remember James Laurinaitis, big number 33, played middle linebacker. He now does work for Fox in the Big Ten Network. He's a good friend. I'll see him in some of the press boxes. Beanie Wells, he was a guy just before Ezekiel Elliott, you know, one of the good running backs, big muscles, big runner. You know, I'm in the locker room with these guys now. Coach Tress has LeBron James come and talk to our team. And you can imagine early on, I'm just a little kid from Westerville. I'm feeling, a little, I'm feeling a little out of place here, right? Maybe like, what's going on here? I have a couple of funny stories. I remember my first time being on the punt team at Ohio State. I was, I was running what they call scout punt, and it's when you're one of the younger guys. You haven't earned the right to be on the first team punt. So basically what we're doing is we're the, you know, the second and third stringers that are giving a look to our punt defense team. James Laurinaitis is on that punt defense team, and, and what we do in practice is, you know, the games are so physical when we have the Buckeye game day, you'll hear coaches say, hey, just tap off. So if, we're, if you're running and some guy's pursuing you, it's like, hey, we make the tackle, just, just tap off. There's no need to actually tackle them in person. And I don't know if James Laurinaitis just thought it'd be funny, but I was running a fake punt around the end, and I'm getting ready for him to tap off, and I don't know if he's just that strong or... I was that little or I was off, uh, you know, on one leg, but the first thing I know, I'm off to the side, I'm running, I'm tucking the ball, and then boom, I'm on my back. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, what happened? This guy, uh, this guy's pretty strong, this guy's pretty good. So that was my James Laurinaitis tap-off punch story. I look at Chris Beanie Wells, big running back. I mean, six foot three, 240 pounds, Shoulders like boulders. I mean, this guy was, was an amazing running back at Ohio State from up in the Cleveland area. I remember when I, again, as a, as a, as a freshman coming in there, we would recover in the cold tubs. You know, guys' legs are sore. They're tired from camp, two-a-days. So what do you do? The athletic trainers ask you to come in. You're going to recover. You're going to ice. You're going to stretch. You're going to get in the cold tubs. And I'll never forget, I had to text one of my friends after I saw this. Beanie Wells came in. He had a towel around his neck right here, you know, just kind of recovering. And this day, it just happened to be really, really cold. So you can imagine, we're all getting in the cold tub. And this guy starts, this, you could tell, I was just, I was on the same team with these guys, but it was almost, I was 
in awe with them. When I say when he went, oh man, it's cold, I, I think this guy had muscles on his muscles, on the muscles, 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 muscles. And I was just like, oh my goodness, am I, am I supposed to be here? Like, what, this, is, this is crazy. This is crazy. That's what I thought of. And then an example here, you know, having some of the players that would come and speak. You know, I see how our team meeting room was set up. It was from, you know, descending order. Our, 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 our team captains sat up front. You know, our starters were one row behind. And then you could see it was descending order all the way back. So the little freshmen, we just kind of stood in the back there. And I remember seeing the likes of Peyton Manning, LeBron James, I mean, world-class athletes that these coaches would bring in to talk to us, to talk, tell us about motivation and competitive excellence and working hard and doing those type of things. So then I would see Beanie Wells and James Laurinaitis, the guys that I idolize, now idolizing this guy, and I'm in the back of the room, so I'm just seeing all these different levels of, uh, of excellence in front of me, and I'm thinking to myself, man, am I ever going to prove myself here? Am I ever going to have my shot? At Ohio State. And the fact is, um, I did. I did. By, by God's grace and some people that really helped me along the way, I was able to do that. Um, and it was exciting. I earned my first start at The Ohio State University in 2009, and, and that's a story in and of itself. The, the, the weekend before, uh, we were playing USC at home, and it was under the lights, and you know I was just starting to kind of make a name for myself on the team. I wasn't the starter yet, but I was real close, and I remember it was warm-ups, and I, I had pulled my hip flexor just a little bit, and so actually the week of practice, I, I was out the week of practice before this game where I started, and uh, our starting punter ended up getting sick. I got a call two days before the game, believe it or not. I wasn't even on the travel squad because I was injured at the time, but they said, hey, we need you. Our punter's sick. Do you think you can go? So I drove up 71 and started my first Ohio State football game. It was a neutral site against Toledo in Cleveland Brown Stadium. That was the very first game that I was able to start. You think about that being a 19-year-old young man who was trying to find his place on this team, who had an injury he was coming back on, and then to go start and do that uh, for my team, that was a proud moment. And I remember Coach Trestle gave me the game ball in the locker room, um, and that was so exciting. After that, for a year, year and a half, 2009, 2010, that's when Ohio State uh, was at the top. I, wore, I, I put the Rose Bowl up there because in 2010, we were, that's why I wore this ring today, we were blessed to win a 2010 Big Ten Championship in a Rose Bowl with Coach Tressel. We went out to Pasadena and defeated the Oregon Ducks, and that was an incredible highlight. The year after, um, had a chance to start for our 12-1 and football team where we won the Sugar Bowl, won the Big Ten, and we were among one of the most elite programs in all of college football. We finished the year um, third in the country. And just when things were starting to fall into place for me, just when, just when I started to earn my spot on the team, I was finally the starting punter. I had a great relationship with my teammates and my coaches, and I understood this, and I was so excited for this. That's just when, isn't that how life works sometimes? That's just when things get, get shaken up a little bit, right? Just, just when you're finding your stride and everything is, is coming into line. And that's where... I think faith is so important in our lives and, and what we can take away as individuals. We have to have faith. Basically, what happened um, my 2010 year with Coach Trestle, something that is now legal, players um, sold some of their memorabilia, which was not allowed at the time, got in trouble, they were suspended from the team, Coach Tressel, there's so many different ways to look at it. He's such an amazing players coach, always looking out for his players. There was a federal investigation going on with some of the things that were involved with this, uh, this tattoo parlor where these players were selling their memorabilia in exchange for money and free tattoos. 
So Coach Trussell kind of had to stay silent for this while the NCAA was investigating. There was a lot of pressure, and you can see how it's kind of working. Coach Trussell decides to step down. It's devastating for our school. It's a whole new coaching staff that's going to be coming in, and I felt lost for that year. It, it was like our whole world was shaken, bar none. I remember coming home to my mother and father and saying, wow, this is, this is not how I saw it going. This is absolutely not how I saw it going right there. And it reminds me of one of my favorite Bible verses as, as a man of faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. I had to have faith in that moment. I didn't know who the head football coach was going to be. I didn't know what my new punt team was going to be. I knew some guys were going to be transferring. I didn't, the NCAA was going to be you know, coming down on our school. What was going to happen? What I did know was going to happen uh, when it became apparent was that we had turnover with our head coaches. As I mentioned, I had three different coaches in three years. And I like to think of it as, you know, for everyone in here who's mostly worked, you know, worked a job or been in corporate life or had an opportunity to work in that environment, it's every single year introducing yourself. Hi, I'm Ben. This is what I, you know. Hi, I'm Ben. Nice to be starting over. Hi, I'm Ben. So, you know, it, 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 was, it was hard. It was repetitive. It was thinking, how are we going to, you know, how are we going to move on? How are we going to move on as a team from this? And I remember, I remember my father, who I, I can say is, is, is my greatest role model. I'm blessed to have a great relationship with my dad. I had one of those good, honest father-son talks. And he said, you know, Ben, things didn't go the way that maybe we saw them going here. He said, but you've already started one year. You're going to have an opportunity this second year. And you have two years remaining. You can really make, make an impact at this school. And so that's something that I wanted to do. I'll never forget. I put the quote up here. This is what he said to me. He said, Ben, what an opportunity to learn. What an opportunity to soak it up, soak it in, not play for just one legend, but for multiple legends, to, to learn from a Jim Tressel, to learn from a coach Luke Fickle, to learn from a coach Urban Meyer. And so as I started those three years, that's exactly what I did. So I want to tell you a little bit about my coaches when I played for Ohio State. I think this guy needs no introduction. Coach Jim Tressel was the head football coach at Ohio State 2001 through 2011. Uh, at that time, he, when I was there, he had three Big Ten championships. He was undefeated versus Michigan in the three years I was with him. Won a Rose Bowl championship, won a Sugar Bowl championship, won the 2002 national championship, was in two other um, national championship games. And what I loved and continue to love most about this guy, I have a great relationship with him this day. He is the epitome of one of my favorite Teddy Roosevelt quotes. You can see it right there. It says, speak softly and carry a big stick. I love that. What, yeah, I mean, a guy who, this guy, if he wanted to, absolutely ruled Columbus. He, he would walk down the street. Everybody knows who Jim Tressel is. Everybody wants to talk to Jim Tressel. Everybody wants the ear of Jim Tressel. He was an amazing coach, an amazing person, and I learned so much from him by how he lived his life. He had an amazing fatherly figure aura about him that I think his players really gravitated to, if you're being honest. He wrote a book entitled The Winner's Manual, which you can see. You can still buy this book to this day. I would highly, highly encourage it if you want to write it down. It's called The Winner's Manual, and it's his book for, make, for what makes winners winners. Not winners on the field. He talks about being winners in life. How do we become winners in life? Just to give you a, a snapshot for what this player was like, or for what this coach was like, we, would, uh, we had a binder. We had a player binder every day before we would go out to practice. We'd break into you know, team meeting, punt meeting, individual meetings, go out to walkthroughs, go out to practice. But before we did that, we would have to sit down every day. We'd have a binder. We'd have a, we'd have a sheet right here. And he would make us write out every day one thing 
we, will th- we were thankful for, one thing we were grateful for, and to live each day, to try to actively live each day with, with a pure and thankful heart in life. And, and I'll tell you, sometimes during the middle of camp when we hadn't seen our families in three weeks, your dog tired, you, you, know, you, you can't barely walk because you've, you've had such a tough camp. He, he, would, he would challenge us. He would say, fight to, fight to find the thankfulness. Fight to find the gratefulness. And that's something that I'll never forget, never forget from Coach. One of the best things that I think he epitomized as well is when he was talking to someone, he made you feel like you're the most important person in the room. He, he had a connection with the, he, he was a true people person. And that's why I think Coach Trestle will always be so high um, in my book. And most importantly, I have to put this in, for those of you that know football well, Coach Trestle was known for saying the punt is the most important play in football. And I was the punter, so that's good. <laughs> right? That's, that's going to make anyone feel good, too. Coach Luke Fickle. Coach Luke Fickle is an incredible individual that I have the utmost respect for. This is a guy that should look familiar to you if, you, if, you, if you're a, a Buckeye fan that studies the team very closely. Coach Luke Fickle played for the Ohio State University in the mid-'90s under John Cooper when he was here. He actually started the Rose Bowl with a, with a torn shoulder. That's how tough this guy was. And he got on the staff with Coach Tressel as a defensive assistant, eventually started working with the defensive line, was elevated to the defensive coordinator. And then when Coach Tressel stepped down for that one year, in comes Luke Fickle. You want to talk about big shoes to fill in coming, in coming in for a guy like Jim Tressel. This is a guy who I think was in his you know, late 30s, early 40s, filling in for a legend in Coach Tressel well into his 60s, a very seasoned leader, a guy who knows what he's doing, what he's been doing for a long time. And he challenged us that year when people were counting us out. You know, how are you going to play with your leader gone? The NCAA is looking at you, you know, these type of things. He said, we're going to be men of action. A lot of people are going to say things with their mouth. He would say, talk is cheap. We're going to be about action. Step up when your number is called. It's about the the men in this room. That's what he would always say. Block out the noise. Have to work to block out the noise. Easier said than done, but when I think of Coach Luke Fickle, um, that's what he was about. You'll see some will be about talk, but we will be about actions. Step up to the plate. Be about actions. It's, it's either, he would say, it's either fight or flight. And this is a guy who fought. We, we, we had a tough season that year. We were a 500 ball club. We went six and six. I got, a, I got a lot of good punts that year. I'll tell you what, there was a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of punting. Now, if you know football, you don't want to see me on the field a lot because that means that we're, 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 we're not scoring touchdowns if we're punting, right? I digress. He, he was an incredible um, person that I look up to in my life for someone that when, when maybe you don't feel like it or things haven't been going well, he stepped up to the plate and he did it every day with class, with humility, with honor, And man, it has paid off for him because he went down to Cincinnati, signed a nice lucrative deal there, and he's been having multiple 10, 11, 12 win seasons in the American Athletic Conference. I know he's only going to continue to get better and better. And then this guy. I mean, what do we say about about Coach Urban Meyer, the coach right before our current head football coach, Ryan Day? I had a chance to play for Coach Urban Meyer for one year. It was my senior year of college at OSU. Um, absolutely incredible leader, master culture builder. And I'd be lying to you if I said, man, that sounds good. Man, he was tough to play for. He was tough on guys, tough. He demanded a lot, but the right people rose to the expectations. That's what I think about Coach Meyer. When I've had a chance to reflect on my time with him, you know, I really only had 11, 12 months with him. I was that senior year when, we came to Ohio, when he came to Ohio State. If you remember, that was the year we had the sanctions from the bull penalties. And we went 12-0. and 0. If you actually know your history with Ohio State, there's been less undefeated football teams at Ohio State than there have been national championships. You think about that for a second. This was a year we went 12-0. and We weren't able to go to the postseason because of an NCAA-enforced ban. 
But he told, he told us, he said, we need to make the great state of Ohio proud. He said, those who stay, he said, we'll, you'll, you'll be champions. We're going we're gonna to be a part of something special here. You're probably seeing those things up there. Four to six, A to B, competitive excellence. Do your job. What is that? What is that? As I mentioned, Coach Meyer was a master culture builder. He, he wanted to, the way he said it, he wanted to be able to make his culture and his expectations and his bar so high and so clear that you could literally, he used this word, you could regurgitate it. It was that quick. I haven't played for this guy in eight years, and I still remember four to six, A to B, competitive excellence, do your job. I remember that. That's what it is. Four to six, he says the average football play is four to six seconds. That's all I need your focus for, four to six seconds. A to B, you go point A to point B as fast as you can. He doesn't want guys thinking. His, his philosophy with coaching is that you get too schematic. We, we get guys too much in their heads. I recruit the best players to Ohio State. I want you to go play, be great in space. Your job to play, my job to coach. That's how he would look at it. I did appreciate that as an athlete. Competitive excellence. Every day is a competition. Every day is a competition. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes those days were uncomfortable. You have days where you just want to coast a little bit. I, I don't want to have one of those, day co you know, those days coach. And he said, okay, well then we'll find someone who will. That, 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 it was that type of environment. And that's what I'm saying. It was a champion environment. It wasn't always a comfortable environment. I'm being honest with you. But man... This guy uh, could and can and will coach, and we're continuing to see that today. If you want to know what Coach Meyer's like, I, I used to always joke with the guys, and I think I would say this to his face. I, I think every morning he probably wakes up with his wife and sees who can eat cereal the fastest in the morning. I mean, everything is a competition with this guy. Everything is a competition. But I think that's what makes him great. I think that's what makes him tick, and I think that's what made him uh, one of the greatest coaches in Ohio State history as we can see. The proof is in the pudding, as they say. So after my career at Ohio State, I was, I was blessed to win three Big Ten championships. I gotta be honest, I only get to wear these rings when I get to come and speak to cool people like you. So thank you for having me out. This is the only time I get to wear these type of things. But I took some great takeaways from Ohio State, not just the championships, the undefeated season, the, you know, the the legacies, the Heisman Trophy, you know, guys that I'm playing with and, and just being in and around this mindset. It was so cool. But if I could have some takeaways from Ohio State, you learned every day toughness. And not toughness in the, the you know, kind of trivial sense. I'm talking about every single day putting one step in front of the other. And our coaches used to tell us it's, it's mind over matter. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. That's what they'd say. Run the day, don't let the day run you. I'm going to choose to work hard. I'm going to choose to have a positive mindset. I'm going to choose to make those connections, make those relationships, be the best that I can be every single day. I'm going to run the day, not let the day run me. The perfect way that I can encapsulate it, you'll see I have a lion up there. And I have a lion up there because it's one of my favorite quotes and life lessons that we would have in our players' winner's manual. You remember I said Coach Trestle had a, a book. It actually was a player manual that he turned into a book, but we would get the player's manual. And, and, and like I said, we'd write down what we're thankful for, what, we're, what we were grateful for. That was Coach Trestle's way of starting every practice. And included in that book, there were a bunch of quotes, short stories, important people, things that you can imagine. It was a source of inspiration before we would gather as a team. We all had our winner's manual. It was our booklets. And there's a quote from Coach Trestle's winner's manual that I'd like to read you. And he would read this to us in, in the toughest times. It was the dog days of camp or maybe a, a great victory we just had because he didn't want us to get too high. We got to attack each day. Maybe it was, a, maybe it was a, a loss. Maybe we did lose a game, which I know around here is the unthinkable. We can't do that. But he would all, there, was, there was an important story that was called The Lion and the Gazelle. And I want to read this to you. It's very short, but you can understand the sentiment and the thought behind this. It reads, every morning in Africa, a gazelle wakes up. A gazelle. It knows it must run faster than the fastest lion, 
or it will be killed. Every morning a lion wakes up. It knows it must outrun the slowest gazelle or it will starve to death. It doesn't matter whether you're a lion or whether you're a gazelle. When the sun comes up, you better be running. Thought-provoking. Interesting, right? What, what the takeaway from that, obviously the storyline, the lions, the gazelles, it's saying what he would challenge us as young men is that you better, you better be running life every day. You better not be taking any days off. You better really fight that idea of coasting, right? And I love that. I think for myself and people of my generation and, and all generations in life, if we can fight that urge to be complacent, if we can run the day and not let the day run us, those are some of my biggest takeaways from my time at Ohio State I loved. Now, obviously, which is really sad, I can't play football forever, right? I got to do something with my life once that, once that ends. And I can say that's where this last point comes in for me right here, this idea of vision. We've heard our coaches and administrators and people in our institution at Ohio State saying life after sport. What does life after sport look like for you? I've played with guys that didn't, you know, made it, signed the scholarship with Ohio State but never played a down. I've played guys like myself that earned the scholarship and were multiple year starters and had a great career and then went on to other things. I've played with guys that are still playing in the NFL right now. I mean, there's all different careers that you're going to have, but I think it's important to have that vision for life after sport. I had some incredible experiences at Ohio State, life transformational experiences that I am forever grateful for. And I think after that, it caused me to pause, and I said, in life, it's important to know where I've been, but most importantly, where we're going. I think that idea of reflection is key. So that's what I did. I sat down, and and after I had finished my senior year at OSU with Coach Meyer and my teammates, we had gone 12-0. I had my last punt in Ohio Stadium. I'll never forget. It was right on the 50-yard line. Dropped it right inside the, I would say, the eight or nine-yard line against uh, I can't use the, the name, but that, that team up north, right? That, the, the maize and blue, that, that team that we, we distance ourselves from, right? So I was thankful for that. I, had a, I, had a, I was blessed to have a great ending to my career against the team that we wanted to beat the most, and we won, and it was an undefeated season, and it was a wonderful way to cap my career. I knew I wanted to go to grad school, maybe chase some careers in media, which I'll talk about, and, and I'm thankful to see how the Lord has worked in my life and allowed me to progress in those areas. But, but I, I knew, I felt a little conflicted. I knew there were positives with my experiences at Ohio State. I knew there were negatives with my experience. Some of the positives, you know, like I said, the three amazing coaches that I had a chance to play for. I was blessed to be a three-year starter for, you know, I might be a little biased. We all might be a little biased, but I would call it the greatest university in America, right? Ohio State. Friendships, memories, opportunities that I knew would, would last a lifetime. But I wanted to do something about something that I was, I was restless with. And that was what happened when we had a shakeup at OSU with the coaching staff and some of the players. And the negative was the way the NCAA sanctions affected my coaches, myself, fellow players, the great fan base of the state of Ohio. So I wanted to do something about it. What I wanted to do was pursue a career, pursue a meaningful career that I knew I could still be around sport, still be with sport, and to do it in a way that epitomized class and humility to the very best of my ability. So first off, I remember now being a retired collegiate football player. I was sitting home for one of the first seasons afterwards, and I was watching a game with my father, and I was watching college game day. I don't know if you, you, you all are probably familiar with Kirk Herbstreet, right? We know Kirk Herbstreet, who's the star of college game day. Everybody wants his job. I'm praying when he retires, they give me a call maybe. I'm, I'm hoping. We'll see. But I remember watching college game day, and I was sitting with my dad. I said, Dad, I can do that. I enjoy talking. I enjoy being around people. I feel like I have a good knowledge for the game. I really feel like I could do that. And my dad being my dad, he said, okay, well, so, so what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do, right? So 
I mean, I didn't have any special in. I didn't really know anyone super well. I gave a call to Clay Hall, who you might see him if you watch ABC6 Sports Television. He's the sports director for ABC here in town. And I'm blessed to say he's now one of my bosses when it comes to ABC and Fox Television. I remember calling him saying, Clay, you remember me. We, we, we had a good relationship with the player media days. I felt like we had some good interviews. I've watched your show, The Football Fever, pregame, postgame, Ohio State show. I think, I think I could do this. Do you have a spot? Could I try out? That type of a thing. He said, you know what, Ben? I'm actually I'm reshuffling the show a little bit right now. I think you do have a good personality. We don't know if you can talk on camera, if you'll get too nervous or, you know, those type of things. But why don't you come down to the studio? Why don't you meet the GM? You can meet our news director. And um, we'll do a session with you. We'll see how it goes. And when I say I felt like my heart was beating out of my chest when I went down there, oh, my goodness. I went down. I talked through some ball. They played some highlights. You know, I, I have people talking in my ear. I'm looking at these teleprompters, all these lights. I'm like, oh, my gosh, what's happening right now? But I must have done okay, because they did give me the job. They did hire me. And I can say now, this is going to be my eighth season that I've been with the Football Fever. And, and uh, it's been an experience of a lifetime, a lifetime, being able to transcend the player role into now the broadcaster role and just have so much fun with the people in this university. Um, it, it, it's been very exciting. So we have a show uh, this coming Thursday. I would urge you to watch it, 6.30 to 7.30 on Fox, if you want to watch right before the game. And you'll see me looking somewhat familiar without the mask. So I'd love, to, I'd love to see you on there. A little plug, Clay will appreciate that, a little plug for our show. So 6.30 to 7.30, right before the 8 p.m. kick on uh, Fox 28. That'll be in town. You'll see what I have quoted there. Have fun with it. Have an opinion and go. I remember when I started, I, I remembered you know, wanting to kind of play it cool on both sides. And what I've learned in broadcasting is you have to have a strong opinion and you have to go with it. And that's what's going to allow you to have a good voice and to have fun with it. So Clay Hall has been so good to me at ABC6 and Fox 28. And then now what I have a chance to do as well, I knew that beyond my, um, beyond my broadcasting career, I love the university setting, and I think I wanted to stay in the university setting. So after my undergraduate, which was in communications, I went on to get a master's in sport management, sport administration. I went on to, to get my doctorate in sport management, sport administration, and uh, wrote a dissertation study um, based on the lived experiences of my time at Ohio State. My study that I, I conducted was called The Impact of NCAA Sanctions on Student Athletes. And it was some of the lived experiences. It was a qualitative study where I interviewed former student athletes, um, conducted what's called a narrative inquiry, and we, and we came across these thematic elements that we wrote in the literature for what it was like to live through this tough time as a university athlete with the hopes of improving outcomes, improving policy for the NCAA. Some of the elements that we came across in the interviews were a sense of loss, disappointment, questioning, stress, instability, with obviously um, qualitative research to, to back it up. And so I published a dis dissertation study, and I've had a chance to do interviews on this subject when it comes to the NCAA shaping policy. And one of the new things that's just come out that would have changed 10 years ago is now university athletes are able to profit off their name image likeness, which is called NIL. And, um, and, and this is seeing the, the, the progress and the change that's happening with college athletics. And it's interesting to see just how much athletics have changed in the last 10 years. And that's what I'm blessed to be a part of now is to be one of the, um, the people that are going to shape that with my faculty position at Ohio State. 2018, I was blessed to be offered a faculty position within the sport industry department at The Ohio State University. That's where I have a chance to teach sport leadership, sport ethics, sport and social values are a few of my classes. If any of you would like to audit them, I'd love to see you in class as well. And I can honestly say, um, I can honestly say that I love what I do. I love being around uh, these young people that are eager to learn, that are eager to, to shape the world uh, when it comes to this discipline. I love 
You can see the classes that I teach, leadership. I'm passionate about some of the leaders that have impacted my life. Myself even being a leader, having a chance to shape the, the younger generation. All of you being amazing leaders and the people that you have shaped and continue to shape in your life. It's an amazing discipline to be a leader. Ethics, social values, that stuff is important, especially if it's in a business setting, a family setting, a social setting. Sport, uh, sport uh, the, the ethical side, as I mentioned. And then there is another class that I didn't put up there, popular culture, understanding our, our ever-changing culture and how it relates to sport. These are some of my days and, and the blessings that I'm able to live out with my time at Ohio State. And I, I was telling my students just how much I enjoyed my job this morning and being with them. But I think I have more fun with all of you. I've, I've enjoyed this. I, I can honestly say that. It, we're, we're very pro-Buckeye here, so I like that. So that is a little bit about me. That's a little bit of my story. Those are the things that I was able to take away from my time at The Ohio State University. I think if, if I'm honest, I, I always try to look at life as, as an evaluation, as an examined life. Where, where have I been? Where am I at? Where am I going? How can I get better? I'm so thankful for Ohio State. Ohio State has provided so much for me. I think it's an amazing academic institution. It's an amazing athletic institution. Uh, the relationships and the people that I was able to meet there and that I still am able to meet, um, I'm a Buckeye through and through. I always will be, like all of you. I think that's what I want us to remember today. If you can take anything from my story, I hope that we all can try to embody a little bit of humility with a little humor. You, you remember those stories I was telling you when, when uh, James Laurinaitis and Beanie Wells and LeBron James is talking to us, and I felt about this small in the room. I felt about that small starting out. It's important to have faith. Sometimes life's going to get shaken up. Leadership's going to get shaken up. Maybe friends or family dynamics are going to get shaken up. I think when the rug gets pulled out sometimes, that's when we really find out who we are as men and women and what's important. And lastly, vision. Know where we're at. But most importantly, like I said, let, you know, don't let the day run you. Make sure that you run the day. Have that vision. Know where you are. Know where you want to go and why, that is, uh, why that's so important. So I want to say thank you for having me today, allowing me to come share a little bit of uh, my story and my heart with all of you. I love being around so many exciting Buckeyes. Um, and I would love to open it up if you all would have any uh, questions for a little um, Q&A that we could have to make it kind of fun. So that's all that I have for my formal presentation. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, sir. We'll start in the back there. What advice will you be giving to the superstars who are going to make a million? <laughs> their responsibility to the rest of the team. Yeah. Well, I think, you know what? I can honestly say, having been a part of the three amazing coaches that I was a part of, and I know, you know, a guy that, that I have a chance to cover in the media I've never played for, but Coach Ryan Day, he's a guy who preaches humility toughness, brotherhood, knowing that it's not just you that gets you to that, that place, right? I really think, um, I think those guys that, that are able to go to the NFL and to make that type of money, it's almost unimaginable. I get it. Um, I hope that, I hope they would live with that. I would hope they, they would live with humility. They'd have the face. They'd understand the vision to know that it wasn't just them that got them to that point. Right? It, was a, it was a bunch of people that coalesced and helped you achieve your goals. I think if we can live with that humility, um, that goes a long way for those athletes. That's, that, would be, that would be my hope for them. What would you say to them? Well, should they share the money? Should they share the money? <laughs> well, I guess that I, I, that I will. They, they, I think, you know what, I heard, I heard a quote right there. Pay it forward. And that was, a, that was a quote that was famous by Woody Hayes, our probably most legendary coach at Ohio State, a guy that I would have killed to have been in the room to hear some of his life lessons and talks. I mean, unbelievable person. Um, I think, I don't know how, if, if, if he would disperse the money, but I know that normally a lot of the guys and girls that make it big from Ohio State, 
they, you know, they always say you can't pay back, but you can always pay forward for the next generation and the people that are going to come after you. So I hope that they would pay it forward. That's what I would say. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, I get that question a lot. I, I, I was blessed to have a, a, a very good career at OSU. My best year was probably my, my junior year. He asked me, he said, did you ever think about turning pro at any time? Um, yeah, looking back, man, I wish I would have, you know. So, <laughs> no, no. I, um, you know, I think about knowing yourself, too. I, I naturally was uh, recruited at, at Ohio State as more, of a, as more of a place kicker, but my first uh, playing opportunity came came punting the ball. And, um, and so I went with that route, and I knew I was really good at what I did, but, you know, that NFL, that's just a whole other elite area, and, 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 I, and I, I do sometimes wish that I would have tried for it. I didn't hire an agent. I didn't go for a camp. It was, I had those conversations with my dad where, you know, I was looking to grad school. I was looking to media. I was kind of ready to make that next step um, because I talked to some guys. It, it's different at my position as a punter and kicker, you think about quarterback, you know, you have a first string, second string, practice squad guys and stuff, offensive linemen the same, you have five or six wide receivers. When you're talking about punter, you have one guy. Kicker, it's one guy. They don't carry multiple backups. So you're either the best 32 in the world, 32 teams in the NFL, or free agent is a fancy word for unemployed. So... <laughs> That's really what it is. So I decided to go a different route. That's how I decided to go. Thank you for the question. Follow up. As a punter, you hit a lot. Did you get any injuries? Any injury? Yes. Yeah, so he asked, did I get any injuries from punting? You know what? Um, I, I did go. And that's actually what ended up shaping my career was um, coming into my, what would have been my sophomore year, I was kicking a field goal in practice, and you know, when you're kicking, you're coming through the zone, you're kicking it, you're obviously exposed on one leg. I had one of our big offensive linemen roll into me, rolled my ankle over, and I was out for a little bit during the kicking competition. That's what set me back one year and allowed me to go more of the punting route. I was able to make a full recovery, thankfully, but uh, that is what set me a little more on the punting route rather than the place kicking. I was never in a game, uh, did I get hurt, which I was thankful for, because, you know, I'm not a small guy, but I'm, not a, I'm about six foot, 190 pounds, playing with Ohio State defensive tackles. I mean, these guys are six foot six, 280 pounds. I mean, they're, they're huge, you know, they're huge. So I don't want to get hit. I don't want to get hit by those guys, you know. I'm trying to distance myself over there. Thank you for the question. Anyone else have a question? Uh, I can answer. Yes. Oh, what, yes, sir. Oh, here. We'll go here. Sorry. What's your opinion as to why Urban Meyer gave up coaching at Ohio State? Why Urban Meyer did what? I'm sorry? Gave up coaching at Ohio State. Gave up coaching. Decided. Yeah. He, the question was why co opinion as to why Coach Meyer gave up coaching at Ohio State. You know, I think I've thought about that for a long time. I've talked with some of us ex-players because, yeah, he, he was here and had such a long storied run. And then what it was understood to be is he retired because of health reasons. You know, that's what they said. You know, the headaches and the, um, those type of things. Um, and then now he is, he is back in the league. I don't know the reason for that. I mean, I've never had a, an in-depth conversation with Coach as to why he did. I think, um, I, I do believe there was some legitimacy to his health. And I obviously can't comment on his own health. But... Um, you know, him and his wife, Shelly, and their family, they're really good people. They're from the state of Florida. I knew they maybe wanted to get back there at that time. Coach did a great job for the one year he was out for the Fox Big Noon kickoff. You'd see him broadcasting as well. So I don't know. He's had a very interesting career. He's won at Bowling Green. He won at Utah. He did so well at Florida for so long, came here. Um, but like, you know, many coaches that are ascend to that level, you know, you're under the microscope. Everybody's always looking at you. So I, I, I don't know the real reason. I, I'm curious. And I, if I ever do get to have a conversation with Coach and ask him straight up for what that was, I, I would be very interested to know, just like you. So that was a good question. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Take us through a step-by-step -step process of kicking a 50-yard field goal. Oh, okay, okay. I can do that. Are you trying to show off your leg a little later? You want to show everyone? Okay. 
Well, what, what happens first is obviously you have your, your line that's in front of you in the center of the long snapper. That was my, one of my best friends in high school. I had a good relationship in college as well. And then the placeholder, the guy who's going to be you know, down here, who's, who's catching the ball and being able to put it on the tee, you have to treat that guy well. I, I, I would want to buy him a steak dinner every Saturday. If he, if he does well, then I do well. So that's what's important. So you want a good snap right back, right here. Turn the laces, right? I don't want to kick the laces if I'm back there. So laces out, as they'll say. He'll have it up. My steps would be, I'd take three steps back. And I'd, I'd, I'd point from my toe to the ball, to the uprights. I'd, I'd take an aim. And then I'd take two steps over. And that's where you see guys that, you know, college or the NFL, they're looking at that target line. They say, okay. That's when he gives the snap. Take the jab. One, two. And then you... Finish high. You think I still got it or no? Yeah. All right, thank you. <laughs> That's a step-by-step -step tutorial. Now, see, now you can go kick 50-yard field goals. No problem. <laughs> there you go. Should be absolutely no problem for you. Thank you. That's a good question. You know, and I have to, I have to be honest, I still do get to relive the glory days a little bit when I, have, uh, uh, when I get to give some lessons in town. And like I said, I love the Woody Hayes quote. You can't pay back, but you can always pay forward. I had so many great people that poured into my life, so I want to try to have the opportunity to, to pour into young people's lives as well. I think that's important. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I see the kickers kicking from further and further and further yes. away. So Amazing. what does it take to prepare for that long distance? Oh, my gosh. It, it does. It seems like every five to ten years, the... the you know, they just keep raising the bar. They keep raising the bar. They keep raising the bar. Um, I think I can honestly say I think that the, the strength and conditioning programs that are within these college programs now are world class. I mean, world class. The co I played for, uh, you know, two great strength coaches um, while I was at OSU. Eric Lichter, who um, I believe is still in town and runs a gym. He was the strength and conditioning coach under... Jim Tressel and Luke Fickle. And then when those coaches departed, Urban Meyer brought in Mickey Marotti. And you'll hear that name if you listen to the talk radio or, or you know, they'll refer to him as Coach Mick. And he's still there with Ryan Day. Man, they run these guys hard. They train them hard. The weightlifting, the stretching, the recovery, the, the training table. The, I, mean, I mean, I think athletes' uh, bodies are just getting stronger and more defined and more flexible and they just keep raising the game and that's what we're seeing so athletes you know maybe 15 20 30 years ago great athletes it, that's what's so fun with the generations I, i'm a big basketball fan too i think michael jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time you know the younger generation they want to say you know they want to say lebron and kobe now and then the next guys are going to and that's what's so amazing is Every generation has their guys and girls, you know, but I think you can see from a sports performance uh, level, man, the, the distances, the times, everything just keeps getting better and better. I think, I think it's a result of just the improved and refined training that we see over and over. I just think it keeps getting better. Great question. Great question there. Any other questions that I can answer? Anyone have a thought? Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you for your wise words. Oh, thank uh, you. You seem to be in pretty good shape yet. Do you have a physical uh, readiness program you participate in? I do. Yes, sir. I, uh, I, I, I try to stay in good shape post my playing year. Um, I, you know, I play sports for fun, um, but I also do uh, weight train, circuit train, those type of things. Um, I, you know, it's crazy. This last year with COVID, I, I have and am a part of a gym, but just for safety, I had to do the at-home workouts and, and safety protocols. So I do have fun with that, but I try to stay active. You know, I play uh, golf and tennis with my family. I, I love the sport of baseball was probably my favorite sport growing up, along with football. As I mentioned, I do still train and kick some or play with some young kickers and punters. So I'm out on the field with them. And I guess that's the trick. I just try to stay young as long as I can, I guess, right? So... <laughs> That's what, we're all, that's what we're all trying to do, right? So, yes, sir. No, I, I do. I, I think that actually spawns from my father, who I mentioned is my, my greatest role model. He's a, um, he's a family physician, 
in town, Dr. Timothy Buchanan in Westerville, and he's always preached to myself, my, you know, my nuclear family growing up, my mother, my, my two brothers, that you know, God gives you one body, you take care of it, the nutrition, the health, the training, you take care of your body, your body's going to take care of you. So I, I do, I have tried to live that out in my life. So thank you. It's a good, good question as well. Any other questions? Yes, sir. And one more question. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> we hear so much that in these days about mental uh, stress yeah. and mental health in yeah. athletics, yeah. and particularly in athletes. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that on the Ohio State football team, yeah. and more recently in the Olympics yeah. in Japan. Yeah. What are your thoughts on this topic wow. as far as ath athletes and athletics are concerned? Yeah, that's an amazing question. Very, that, I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up. I think, you know, we talk about this a lot in my, my classes at Ohio State. You know, if, if you recall, I said I teach a, a sport ethics course. I teach a, a leadership course. I'm teaching a popular culture course. And one of the things we talk about in my popular culture class is just how, you know, it's different socially today to be an athlete in 2021 than it was even 20 years ago. And I, you know the reason I think why? I'm going to show you. I think it's because of this thing in many ways. It's because of this. You know, you're referring to the Olympics with Simone Biles, right? While she decided to withdraw from the Olympics, come back in. I think she showed a lot of heart and a lot of grit. I'm sure that was that was probably really hard, really embarrassing for herself, right? In front of the whole world, ha having to do that and then pull out and then why she pulled out and then everybody, you know, they're criticizing her here. Some people are criticizing her there. What do we do? And I think, you know, and, and, and I would be so curious to hear, you know, a sports psychologist's um, thought on this. You know, this is not my wheelhouse and my forte, but I am around a lot of athletes. I do teach on similar subjects where I can start to kind of connect the dots. I think athletes sometimes, they don't get that opportunity to detach anymore. I don't know if there is, you know, the, the public life and the private life anymore. It seems like it's just blurred. And what I mean by that is, you know, an athlete that's on the Twitter, the social media, the Facebook, the Instagram, now fans constantly can give messages to these athletes. Doesn't mean you, you should be mentally tough as to what you're taking in, but some of these athletes, you perform great, yeah, you're gonna get all the praise in the world. But if you perform bad, you're gonna get all the, the negative that's coming to it as well. And I think that's why you see some athletes, they, they, they shut that stuff off. They say, I need to detach from that. I need to have, I need to have the, the private self and the public self and make sure that those are separate. I think sometimes they're blurred. What are your thoughts on that? What do you think? I think it's a matter of establishing a balance in life. I agree with that, totally. I think those are very wise words, being able to, I think, ba I think balance is key and too much of anything is no good. So I do agree with that. I think those very, very wise words, absolutely. Any other questions that I can answer? Yes, ma'am. What's your prediction on how the Hawkeyes are going to do Oh, that's what everybody wants to know. That's right. Um, I think they are every year. You know, there's a saying that we have on the television show, and, and uh, it seems like if you walk the streets in Columbus, this is what they say. You don't, we don't really rebuild at Ohio State. You just reload. It's just, it's just new guys. You know, it's awesome studs that leave, and then there's new young studs that come in. That's really what it is. Um, I think they're absolutely loaded. The offensive line, you know, the guys that are going to pave the way to allow them to run the ball and throw the ball. I mean, they're absolutely huge. Six foot six, six foot eight, six foot. Four, I mean, big, strong guys that are going to be up front. Have a new quarterback this year. Justin Fields was unbelievable the last two years. You know, he's in the NFL now. Um, C.J. Stroud is going to be the starting quarterback, number seven. Highly recruited guy from out in California. He's got a very nice arm. Good runner. I don't know if quite the runner that Justin Fields was, but I think he's going to be able to have the protection he needs with the guys up front for him to be able to, you know, make the throws, make the keys. The wide receiver position is loaded. Chris Olave, 
Garrett Wilson, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. I mean, these are names that you're going to hear. Our tight end, Jeremy Ruckert's back. I want to see the defensive back end, an area that we're looking to see if we can improve, and there's a lot of new faces, is the linebacking core and what they call the back seven, so the corners and the safeties on the defensive side of the ball. So that's the area to watch out for this year, but my guess is it's just a bunch of really talented guys that we haven't heard of yet. Two or three games in, they're going to be household names at that point. So it's interesting, though. We start with Minnesota. It's not, a, not one of the easier non-conference games. We start right into the Big Ten conference play. So I'm excited. Thursday night, I know you all probably can't wait either. It can't come soon enough for a good, good Buckeye game for us to watch. So We have, haven't we? We have waited long enough. I know. We're excited. Thank you for that question. That was a great question as well. Anything else that I can answer? I've really enjoyed my, my time with you all this afternoon. Thank you for having me out. I have to say you have a beautiful, uh, beautiful facility here at Friendship Village. I was admiring coming in just how clean and spacious and beautifully lit and just a wonderful area to share together. So thank you so much. I really enjoyed my time with you this afternoon. Thank you. Dan, I want to thank you for sharing your story today. I really wish my father could have been here for your presentation. Oh, As a you. former football coach, it was nice to hear the impact um, they make on young men's oh, lives. Man. Unbelievable. So, yeah, so thank you so much. It was great. Thank Appreciate you. It. Appreciate yeah. it. Have a great day. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.